Again, we'll be starting in about a minute. Um, please copy down the focus question and then please copy down the two definitions that you're either looking up or inferring from the context clues what the uh, words emancipate and proclaim mean. All right, I'm sure if a couple of kids are going to stroll in late because they're going to have the confusion with uh, having me first period because their schedule says second period, but and some kids are just waking up late, I'm sure. All right, so let's just get started. Um, the focus question today is, why did Lincoln finally choose to emancipate those slaves in the South? You should know throughout the beginning of the war, his goal was not to um, emancipate the slaves. You should know that the first two years of the war, he is more focused on preserving the Union but there is going to be a little bit of a change. All right. Um, so in the chat, does anyone want to put what the word proclaim means? So I'm right in the chat what you think the word proclaim means. Proclaim means to announce something of importance officially. Correct. Right, announce officially, publicly. That is correct. All right. So when you proclaim something, you're making an announcement for everyone to hear, for everyone to know. And um, it's not necessarily a law. Okay. It doesn't go as far as that, but... It's a policy that you want everyone to be aware of, all right? So if I proclaim I'm the best um, social studies teacher in the eighth grade at PS89, that's me making an announcement and I'm declaring it officially. If I proclaim that uh, this year's regions class it has a 85 average in the first quarter, okay? I'm making an announcement and declaring it officially and publicly. So um, proclamations are things that aren't exactly laws, but kind of go along the announcements. So something that everyone's kind of aware of. All right, now in the chat, what does the word emancipate mean? Okay, yeah, emancipation is a very, 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 very fancy word to say to free someone. Okay, nice work guys. Okay, so today we're going to look at what's known as the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, what you would say is, okay, if you know what proclaim means, you know what emancipate means, then this should be pretty simple. And I'm going to say both yes, it kind of is, but also no, it's, it's kind of not. Okay, and I'll explain why. Um, so we can make a prediction here, but I'm sure you're already gathering. 
The Emancipation Proclamation was a document signed by Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. What do you think it was? Well, if you know the word uh, free, uh, set to set free in a proclamation, basically it's an announcement to set free the slaves. Okay. Now, this should and is a big moment in history. Okay. But um, we're going to actually look at the details of why it's a little bit different. Okay, so let's go through this. So let's start here at the top. Please copy down what's in red. What was the Emancipation Proclamation? Okay, so I'll give you about a minute to do so, and then we'll go over this. Okay, so let's go through um, what the basics of the Emancipation Proclamation are. So the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by Union President Abraham Lincoln. He's going to sign it in the middle of the war. Um, this is why this is something we didn't talk about earlier on. We were talking about it now because this happens more towards the middle of the war. All right, and very basically, the Emancipation Proclamation freed all slaves in the Confederate States. All right, so... If you're reading that sentence here and you kind of gloss over it quickly, you can kind of miss the important part of it. The Emancipation Proclamation freed all slaves in the Confederate States. Now, you need to make some connections. You need to have some prior knowledge to understand why this is a major problem. All right? The major problem was that since Lincoln did not control the Confederate States at this time, so Abraham Lincoln is not the president of the Confederate States. He's the president of the Union. So since Lincoln did not control the Confederate States at this time, this proclamation really actually doesn't do anything. Okay, it really did not actually free the slaves. So the goal was to free the slaves, but it did not actually free the slaves. Okay, so kind of let's look at why. You know, why was this such a major issue? Okay, Mahin, no problem. Uh, yeah, it looks like some pe a lot of people are coming in and out, so maybe some people are having connection issues. But, uh, you know, obviously this is recorded, so if you ever miss something, it's not a big deal. Just go back to the YouTube. All right, so um, let's kind of think about why this is a major problem. All right, the president can be looked at as the leader of our country, obviously. He's the leader of the executive branch. Though we know the people run the country, he is looked at as the leader. So he's going to make proclamations. But understand, we're two separate countries at this point. We are the Union and the Confederacy. He is not the leader of the Confederate States. That's a guy by the name of Jefferson Davis. So Lincoln basically tells the South, a country he doesn't own at this point, um, that he is freeing their slaves. Now, this is a really interesting thing. This is like Mr. Martinez going to PS83 um, and say, you know, telling uh, their school how they're going to act and how they're going to behave and what their rules are. He doesn't have the power to do that. He's the leader of our school. He can't tell other schools how to operate. All right. It's like our president telling uh, Pakistan what their policies are going to be. They can have influence, but they don't get to make the official rules. All right. So since Lincoln did not own the Confederate States at this time, the Emancipation Proclamation did not actually free one slave of the Confederate States. And notice how he puts Confederate States. This is where you guys need to make the connection. If he said all states, if he said all parts, if he said the Union and the Confederate States, what is the problem? This is the big connection you need to make. Why doesn't he say the Union States? Not an easy question, but let's see if anyone can make it the connection. 
Aura says because of the border states. You are 100% correct. Okay, remember, we have five states in the union right now. Okay, Kentucky, Missouri, right, Delaware, West Virginia, etc. They have slaves. If he b passes a law saying or a proclamation that we're going to free all the state uh, slaves in the union and confederate states, well, now he's going to lose probably five border states and five um, states that are helping to fight the with the union and he doesn't want to do that so he does not come out and say he wants to free all the slaves in the union and confederate states he just says the confederate states okay so now let's try and figure this out a little bit i'm going to see if someone can guess it i'm not going to respond if you're correct or not but i'm going to make a mental note if you're able to guess the reason why lincoln was a very smart guy he obviously knew that the southern states would not listen to him and not and would not free the slaves. So though we can't do a turn and talk, make a prediction in the chat and try and figure out and think why Abraham Lincoln decided to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. Why did he give this proclamation if he knew the southern states were literally going to laugh at him because he does not have the power or authority to do this? Write in the chat if you think you can figure it out because there is a reason. Write in the chat why you think Abraham Yeah, Aura, go ahead. So I think he did this because even though the southern states would enlist to him, the slaves, it, it would weaken the army because slaves, so they produce the supplies for them, they will stop working or refuse to work or run away because of this emancipation, emancipation proclamation. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not going to say if anyone's right at this point, but that's a good thought. Abigail has a pretty good thought. Come on, just three people? I have, I have students in other classes consistently coming up with ideas. You guys got to make your predictions here. Because if you're right, I'm going to be impressed. Oh, Ariel, good guess. Yeah, interesting. Good guess. Like the oversimplified video said, to stop Britain and France. A sign for the slaves, okay. I only got four or five students here. He does. Okay, Muhammad. Keep in mind, though, at this point, halfway through the war, the Confederate States are probably winning. But good thought. I'll give everyone another 30 seconds. We're in slaves part of the army for the Confederate States. Um, good try, Gentiana. They weren't allowed to be a part of their army. Um, that was a good thought, though. Uh, slaves were not allowed to be in the Confederate Army. Good thought, though. All right, 15 more seconds. All right, so I'll say this. Some people were on the right track, but no one got the official reason. Uh, when really thought it would be a better way to get rid of slavery? Maybe. We'll see. No one got the exact reason. All right, so now we actually have to go to the text to find out what the exact reason was. Because when you read the text you'll start to figure out why he did it, okay? Now, for this, when I was your age, you have to separate that Lincoln did this out of the goodness of his heart, okay? Maybe there was a part of it that he said enough's enough with slavery, now we just need to end it. Maybe a part of it was that, but it wasn't really that. All right, we have to look at what the... Um, details actually work. Now, if you go around to teachers in the school, if you go around to your parents and you ask them, hey, um, what freed the slaves of the United States? Many of them would actually say the Emancipation Proclamation, but you see that it can't, he doesn't really have the power to do that because he's freeing the slaves in the Confederate or the rebelling states. All right, so we're going to go to the text to really look at this. So please, everyone, go to the Google Doc at this point. Uh, the Google Doc is a very straightforward lesson. Well, I shouldn't say straightforward. It's a little tricky, but I think what you'll have to do isn't so hard. Okay, so you go to here. Friendly reminder that you have uh, Textbook Thursday due tonight. I only have 13 students that have handed it in at this point. Um, please note that I post these on Friday. You have a full week to always do these. You guys seem to always wait to the last moment, uh, but that is due tonight. All right, but let's go to this over here. 
All right. So when you get to some of these um, complicated texts, like the Declaration of Independence, right, like the Constitution, you know, sometimes we have to take our time and go through what the actual words are. We did this with the Declaration of Independence. It's not an easy thing by any means, but we sometimes want to put these into our own words. We're going to do this today, and we're going to do this tomorrow just with a separate assignment. So we're going to get used to looking at a text and then trying to put it into our own words because the meaning of the text is where the answer lies to why Lincoln did it. If you read the actual proclamation, you will be able to infer why he does this. All right, and it's a pretty good, great move if you ask me. All right, so let's just start with the top here. I'll do the first box or two with you. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put this basically, it's an annotation, you're going to have to put it into your own words, okay? Try and figure out what it's saying and put it into your own words as best you can so you can synthesize it and understand it as an eighth grader. Um, where you see it says don't do, all you have to do is read, but you don't have to put it into your own words. So the first box we don't have to do, uh, though we'll read it. The second box we'll do together. The third and the fourth box you're going to read, but you're not going to have to do. And then boxes five, six, and seven are where the... Um, where the goods are. Okay, so let's take a look. So the Emancipation Proclamation, January 1st, 1863, by the President of the United States, America, which is Abraham Lincoln, a proclamation, and this is what it actually says. So obviously the proclamation didn't look like this. It was on the fancy parchment paper, and it was handwritten, but we're putting it into uh, the virtual form of it for now. Whereas on the 22nd day of September in the year of our Lord, 1862, a proclamation was issued by the President of the United States containing, among other things, the following to wit. So on um, September 22nd, 1862, Lincoln wrote this proclamation, okay? He signed it, and it's to go into effect on January 1st, 1863, which, if you're looking at home, is pretty much halfway through the war. Okay, so this is the middle of the war. Okay, so he says this. So then on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, okay, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people aware of that shall be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. And the executive government of the United States will recognize and maintain the freedoms of such person. Okay, when you're doing this exercise, the way I just read it is not the way to do it. Because I know that's how a lot of you guys are going to approach this text. Okay, what I like to do is I like to basically chunk, even though it's not a lot, each part and then break it down on how we do it. So I first want to start with this. Okay, every time, we'll say every three uh, lines, we're going to try and chunk it and basically try and put it into our own words. So we're just going to focus on this. So when putting it into our own words, it says, then on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863. Okay, so to me, it's saying on January 1st, 1863. All right, that's all it's pretty much saying at this point. I'll take the next three lines. All persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people of where shall then be in rebellion. Which states are in rebellion against the United States? Is that the Union or the Confederacy? Write in the chat, please. Which states are considered in rebellion? Okay, the Confederacy. So, all slaves held in states that are in rebellion, which are the Confederate states, because they are the states in rebellion, all right, we'll do this part now, against the United States shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. That's the very famous line that you may have heard before. So be then, thenceforward, and forever free. Okay? So on January 1st, 1863, all slaves held in states that are in rebellion or the Confederate states are now free forever. And the executive government of the United States will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons. Who is the leader of the executive government, the executive branch in our government? Okay, so the president will recognize and keep their freedom. Okay. 
So this is confusing. Okay. This is confusing on the left. Well, on the right, it shouldn't be now. On January 1st, 1863, all slaves held in states that are in rebellion, the Confederate states are now free forever. The president will recognize and keep their freedom. It's all time. All right, pretty straightforward. Okay. <clears throat> you're going to read this on your own. Okay, you may not get it fully, but try. And then you're going to get to the meat of why Lincoln does this. Okay, read this, put it into your own words here. Read this, put it into your own words here. Read this, put it into your own words here. It is 850. Okay, I'm going to give you about 12 minutes to complete. Okay, 12 minutes to complete this. And then at the bottom here, you're going to fill in the million dollar question. If you are able to figure out why did Lincoln decide to create the Emancipation Proclamation and there's a ding in your head, meaning that you figured it out, a light bulb goes off in your head, why Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation? The why, why did he do it? Write it here and then write it in the chat. Let's see who the first person is to get it. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Oh, sure. I could do that. I could do that for you. All right. There we go. I'll be taking attendance. I'll be taking attendance. See if you can figure out why. You don't have to look it up. I guarantee it's in the text if you infer it correctly.
Okay, about three minutes left, guys. Okay, so my smart beavers in class 8, D1, 8, C1, 8, 1, 8, A1 are starting to figure it out, which is good. Okay, so if you look through each box, okay, the key thing is really here in the last one, okay, on to figure out the why he did it. Um, Rena, kind of? But yes, so I want to explain a couple things. I want to explain a couple things. Okay, so let's go through what the proclamation actually says. Okay, in this box here basically says the military will recognize um, slaves' freedom in the Confederate States. So in the other one, he says the executive branch will. In this one, he says the military will. And this one's just a great thing. He says now that uh, slaves can work and now get paid. Okay, I should say Confederate slaves, right? Now it can work and now get paid. Okay, which is a good thing. That's helpful, but the why he did it was here. Okay, prior to 1863, no slaves, no black people were allowed to fight in the Union Army. If a Union Army wants, uh, if a Union, if a black person wanted to join the Union Army, they were not allowed to. 
people like Frederick Douglass, like, this is stupid. You have plenty of black people in the, in the North that can help out and fight, okay? You have uh, plenty of slaves that were willing to come fight for you. Why wouldn't you open up to the military? And basically, Lincoln was worried that if he did that, that would upset some of the border states. But essentially, by 1863, he does do this. All right, so Lincoln uh, basically says here that uh, the army will allow black people to join the army. Okay, and now this starts to lead into the why. So we have one more slide we're gonna copy down. Most of you, if you're reading and following the chat, you pretty much got the idea and sense of it already. But now let's just make it into official notes and you can figure out why Abraham Lincoln did this. All right, so we're here. This is the last slide for today. And let's go through everything. So Lincoln did not sign the Emancipation Proclamation out of the goodness of his heart. He did not sign it because he was just so sick and tired of the slavery that he wanted to make a change. Lincoln signed it as a military strategy. Right? Do you need to know dates in this class? No, you don't. But understanding the chronology of how the Civil War played out is very important. Understanding that the Union's losing in 1861, they're losing in 1862. Lincoln needs to do something. Otherwise, they're going to lose the war. Now... Is the, is the Emancipation Proclamation the sole reason why the Union ends up turning this thing around and eventually winning? No, I'm not going to say that. But it was a huge help. Okay, and we'll explain why. Lincoln understood that preserving the Union was important, but if he wanted more support for the war, and if he wanted more help in the war, he needed to make this war not only about preserving the Union, but now a war to end slavery. All right. So let's talk about how this happens. From the text you guys saw, all slaves basically heard that they would be free. When Lincoln wrote this, he was not writing it to the Confederate leaders. He was not telling the Confederate government. He was speaking through them so the slaves in the South and to all the free black people in the North, they hear that they're going to be free if the Union wins. Okay, and what does he do? He opens up the military to black people to join for the first time in American history. Okay, now, were there black people that fought in the Revolutionary War? Sure. Were there black people um, that fought in the War of 1812, a Mexican-American War? Sure, there were. But they were not as open Okay, and they couldn't be drafted. Now, this is an opportunity for black people to be enlist and join the war, and close to 180,000 African American slaves and free people enlisted in the army for the Union side. He was telling the slaves in the South, you know what? Screw the Fugitive Slave Act. If you can make it to the North, you can now join the army and fight for us and fight for your freedom. Uh, yes, Abigail, go ahead. So, we're the who fought in the wars like were they militiamen or they or were they part of the free states correct wait back in previous wars yeah they'd be considered militiamen they're not considered that's that's the revolutionary war you had plenty of black people that fought in the revolutionary war simply because it was not the united states army there are usually militiamen and there wasn't really rules around this all right so that's a great question all right so the Union gained more soldiers because of this emancipation. Already the Union, you should remember, had more soldiers in the South. Now they gained close to 200,000 more. And a lot of these African Americans are going to be huge later on in some important battles, such as the Battle of Gettysburg, um, the Battle of Petersburg. There's a couple of others that you're not so familiar with now called the Battle of Fredericksburg. You'll see a little bit later on where black people were used as a huge uh, reason to fight. And it's not just 180,000 you know, soldiers, it's 180,000 inspired soldiers who are fighting for not only their freedom, but their children's freedom or their, uh, you know, their grandchildren's freedom. People were now a lot more inspired to fight. Now, he, it's risky because he'll lose a little bit of support from the border states, but it's gained moreover by the African-American uh, groups in the country that now go help out and help out the union to go fight. All right. The Union gained more soldiers, and because of this, look at all the battles from yesterday. I think the Union won all of them, right? 
all the ones that we did, those battles all take place after 1863. All right. Now, a student in another class asked me, oh, so, you know, once Lincoln freed all the black, uh, all the slaves and they let him join the army, that's the reason why the um, Union wins the war. Not exactly true, but it's a huge help. It's not the sole reason. It's not the only reason. But this was a huge help and a very good military strategy that ended up paying off uh, the huge um, turning points in the war. We said yesterday the Battle of Gettysburg is a turning point. Get Battle of Gettysburg is on 7-1-1863. And that's the date. This happened six months before that. So you're seeing the Union start to make some better decisions. Lincoln makes a great decision here. And these are some uh, huge decisions that help lead to the turning point after the war. What did the Confederacy do after they saw the slaves leave? So I'm not going to say there's a mass exodus of people, Gentiana. Okay, I'm not going to say 100,000 know, soldiers escaped to their slavery. It just now meant that if they escaped to their slavery, uh, they would be, uh, now be able to fight. Um, so is Lincoln misinterpreted in a way with freeing slavery? No, Abigail, because eventually you'll see he does free slavery. It's just not from this. Okay, many people believe that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves and is the reason why slaves are free. It's a part of it. It's, it's getting uh, slavery ending to be on the right track, but it is not the reason. When we go back and look at our history and we say, okay, what actually freed the slaves in the United States? It's not the Emancipation Proclamation because the wording only said the Confederate States. Okay, it's something else. We will learn about that something else very shortly, but it is not this. You just need to take my word for it. All right, many people in America make this mistake. I don't want you guys to make this mistake. This was a military strategy. This did not free one slave in the country. Okay, what freed one slave in the country and what freed all slaves in the country would be something else, would be a law, okay, and would obviously be an amendment to the Constitution, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, class is officially uh, wrapping up here. Um, please make sure the document is turned in. And I will see you guys tomorrow. We will look at one of the most famous speeches in American history called the Gettysburg Address. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Textbook Thursday, don't forget.